So you've got two types of pool shock, but you have no idea which one to use. One says chlorine shock and the other says non-chlorine shock or oxidizer. They both help keep your water sanitized, but they work completely differently. If you choose the wrong one, you could waste time and or money or worse, not solve your pool problem at all. So here's when to use chlorine shock versus non-chlorine shock, which is also known as oxidizer. First, let's talk about what shocking actually means. When you shock your pool, you're adding a concentrated dose of chlorine to break apart contaminants and refresh your sanitizer. Adding shock is in addition to your regular chemicals and is helpful if your water is overwhelmed by an algae bloom, your water is murky, or that your free chlorine levels are low. Both types of shock will oxidize and destroy organic material and reactivate your free chlorine, but there are a few key differences on how they work and what else they do. Chlorine shock actually adds chlorine to your water. It super sanitizes your pool by raising your free chlorine levels high enough to kill algae, bacteria, and other pathogens. Non-chlorine shock doesn't add any chlorine, and it doesn't directly kill bacteria or algae. Instead, it oxidizes, breaking apart organic contaminants and used up chlorine without spiking your chlorine levels. So here's how chlorine shock works. Chlorine shock contains a high concentration of chlorine. It's usually between 10 and 75% available chlorine, depending on which type you use. When you add it to your pool, it raises your free chlorine levels way above normal for a concentrated period of time. The goal of adding chlorine shock to your water is to reach something called breakpoint chlorination. This means raising your free chlorine level to at least 10 times your combined chlorine levels. At this point, your chlorine overwhelms and destroys any contaminants like algae and bacteria. It also breaks apart chloramines, which are those used up chlorine molecules that cause that strong chlorine smell. Now, by the way, if you want all of this information in one place, I recommend checking out the Pool Care Handbook. I've got an entire section on water chemistry, free chlorine, combined chlorine, and shock. Now, there are three common types of chlorine shock. You have calcium hypochlorite shock or calhypo shock. This is the strongest option with 65 to 75% available chlorine. It'll raise your calcium hardness levels a little bit since it has calcium in it and it can also raise your pH. The second one is sodium dichlor shock. This is fast dissolving shock that contains 56 to about 62% chlorine and includes stabilizer. So it will raise your CYA levels and it might also lower pH as well. The third one is liquid chlorine. Now this is the weakest with just about 10 to 12% chlorine and it's gonna raise your pH, but it won't add anything else to the water besides chlorine. Because chlorine shock is so powerful, you'll need to wait at least eight hours or more to swim after using it. And if you're using calcium hypochlorite shock or liquid chlorine, add it at dusk or at night to prevent it from burning off in the sun since this type of chlorine is unstabilized. The next day, you can retest your water to make sure that your chlorine levels have dropped back down to the normal range around three parts per million before you use your pool. You can download and use the Pool Care app to get your water rebalanced and back in working order. Now here's how non-chlorine shock works. Non-chlorine shock's active ingredient is potassium monopersulfate or abbreviated as MPS. Instead of adding chlorine to the water, it works as an oxidizer that breaks apart organic contaminants and chloramines, but it doesn't directly kill bacteria or algae. When you add non-chlorine shock, it oxidizes oils, lotions, sweat, and other organic waste that builds up in your water. It also breaks apart combined chlorine, which is known as chloramines, which frees up your existing chlorine to work more effectively. Now, non-chlorine shock dissolves immediately and leaves no residue. And you can swim in 20 to 30 minutes after adding it, which is way faster than chlorine shock. But the biggest limitation, well, non-chlorine shock's not gonna kill algae or bacteria on its own. While it does help to reactivate the existing sanitizer in your pool, it's not powerful enough to tackle green water or visible algae. So which one should you choose? Use chlorine shock when you have algae or green water. Non-chlorine shock simply is not gonna kill algae. Calcium hypochlorite, dichlor, or liquid chlorine shock is the more powerful choice to clear up algae. Number two is that your water is cloudy. You need that extra sanitizing power to eliminate anything clouding up the water. Number three, you're opening your pool. Chlorine shock will kill any bacteria, pathogens, or algae that have been growing in the off season. Number four is your combined chlorine is high and your free chlorine is low. Chlorine shock will break apart combined chlorine plus it's gonna boost your free chlorine levels. And number five, you can wait eight plus hours before swimming. If your water needs help and you have the time to let the shock work and dissipate, chlorine shock is gonna be your best choice. You can use non-chlorine shock when you wanna swim sooner after shocking. This is perfect for last minute pool parties or if you just wanna refresh your pool water without waiting. 
Two, you're doing weekly maintenance. This helps to reactivate your existing chlorine without adding anything extra to the water. Number three, your water chemistry is already balanced. Non-chlorine shock is not gonna mess with any other level like CYA, pH, or calcium. Number four is that you have high free chlorine. Adding more chlorine shocks just gonna make it worse. And number five, you just wanna eliminate that chlorine smell that I talked about. Non-chlorine shock oxidizes and breaks apart those smelly chloramines, which is also known as combined chlorine. And finally, here's my weekly shocking strategy. For most pool owners, I recommend just using non-chlorine shock weekly for regular maintenance. It keeps your chlorine active and your water fresh without messing with any of your other chemical levels. Then you can use chlorine shock when you have a problem like algae, cloudy water, or after heavy pool use, or maybe you just had a huge storm. This approach gives you the best of both worlds, consistent water quality and troubleshooting help. Now, if you're not sure how to add shock to your water, be sure to check out our other video and check out the pool care handbook at swimu.com book. Thanks for watching. And as always, happy swimming.